It's Friday evening, I'm home alone, the twins are in bed, and I've got very poor lighting. So let's play a game of On My Shelf. On My Shelf is something that I've invented, and when I say invented, I mean I'm inventing it right now. You're witnessing the invention of this game. Basically, what's going to happen is this. As you can see, behind me I have two sets of shelves. On this side, there are seven shelves, and on this side, there are seven shelves. If I go upstairs, there is what I'm calling a secret shelf. Let's call it shelf number 15. I'm going to choose three sets of numbers. So if I was to say 5, 30, then I would go to shelf 5, which is up here, and I would go across to book 30, I would take it off the shelf, and I would talk to you about it. I will then do the same for two other books. My theory is that every book has a story, where you bought it, what it means to you, and of course, whether it was any good or not. Once this game is over, I would love you till the end of time if you were to leave a comment below and tell me the next three books I have to pick. Just give me a shelf number, one to 15, and let's say one to 40 in terms of books in a row across the shelf. Final rule, I will have done no preparation whatsoever. That's certainly the case now. I have no idea what books I'm going to talk about. I'm spending far too long trying to explain this. It's actually very simple, so let's get cracking. Ready? Four, 16. I've already knocked down one of the uh, bikes that are on the shelf just over there. Shelf four, book 16 is Alan Silito's Saturday Night, Sunday Morning. First published in the late 50s, Saturday Night and Sunday Morning um, was a book that I read on my degree course, which is going to be the case for a number of the books that you can see behind me. And yes, it was one of the ones that I actually read. The book was also made into a film which starred Albert Finney. It's about a guy called Arthur Seaton who is married and ends up having a couple of affairs which become kind of known locally and things kind of go wrong when he falls in love with one of those people. But most importantly, it was a real dissection, I suppose, of working class England in the uh, 50s and 40s and that kind of time. That's why it's ended up on syllabuses in universities and why it's still an important book today. Next book. 13, 10. After Stroke by David M. Heinz. Dear viewer, I promise from the bottom of my heart I have not used this as an excuse to talk about my own novel. However, I do have to tell you that After Stroke was one of the books I read uh, for my research when I was writing A's for Angelica. After Stroke is basically a first-hand account of having a stroke and the recovery process by someone who's been there and done it. I also read other accounts of having a stroke like Diving Bell and the Butterfly famously and various other kind of non-fiction style titles. This is non-fiction but it was written in a really interesting way. In After Stroke, Heinz talks about his own experience of having a stroke so it does feel a little bit like you're prying almost but at the same time he provides lots of medical information too so he literally talks through what he was uh, going through at the time and what happened to him in a medical sense which is why it was useful for me and my research when I wrote A.S. Frangelica out in all good bookshops. Last book. 2. 27. The last book is Ace Frangelica by the very handsome Ian Broom. Of course I'm joking, that's not the real book. What would the chances be of such a thing happening? No, the real book is The Men Who Stare at Goats by John Ronson. Can I be perfectly honest with you, uh, dear viewer? I have not read this book. However, what I do know is that he's supposed to be a tremendous writer, again, who I've not read at all, but tremendous writer and it's supposed to be a very good, funny book. And just thinking about it, totally off the cuff, it just came to me. The Men Who Stare at Goats was also turned into a film. A very successful film starring George Clooney, which I did actually see. I may have just remembered. The only real problem we have here is that I can't remember much about the film either. And even better, I can't actually remember how I came upon this particular book, where I bought it from, what the story is. So this makes the whole premise of what's on my shelf pretty much, pretty much, uh a shambles. Anyway, that's it. It can only get better from here on in. What you need to do now, if you really don't mind, is to leave two numbers in the comments. The first is a shelf number, remember, one to 15, and then I reckon there are around 30 to 50 books on each shelf. So if you go up to about 40, that should do it. And of course, if you'd like to play What's My Shelf yourself with your own shelves, then uh, go for it. Just, just go for it. It's a brilliant game. There are no flaws in it whatsoever. And um, I'd, love to, uh, I'd love to see those videos. So let me know if you do, 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 do that. I just realised that I have to remember exactly where I got the books from, otherwise the game won't work long term because the numbers will be different and then what if I buy new books? Oh, this is the worst idea I've ever had.